You know, when he speaks, the universe is created. When he speaks, the dead come to life. When he speaks, the wind lays, the wind quits blowing, the waves lay down. I mean, everything obeys the voice of God. In English, we have verse and prose. Verse is a spoken sentence, and prose is, you know, poetry that rhymes. So, universe is a single spoken sentence. First, I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. Well, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves. All the truth. My goal in the video was to demonstrate whether it is Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus, or Jesus. All of them are actually the same name. So he comes on to the video and says his name is not Jesus. It is Yahuwah, the Savior. He is very clear on who he is. Then he gives scripture references. And I tried to explain to him that those are not included in any Hebrew lexicons. Monitoring spirits can only move based on what they know about you. Meaning, as long as you keep your mouth shut, you won't have to watch your back. They won't be able to afflict you. Because monitoring spirits are not like God. Unlike God, they are not omniscient. Meaning, they cannot read your mind. Such a good movie. <laughs> All right, man. You guys take it easy. What is it? Are you just having some fun drinking out of the wells of Babylon? <laughs> Watching a little movie that the CIA paid him a little tip to put in some propaganda. Welcome to the latest episode of Holly Monday. Welcome back, family. It is a brand new episode of Holly Motivated. I don't know. I'm in a weird mood today. I'm glad you guys are here to join me once again as we go through some of the wildest videos that I could find. After that, we are going to be reading in Galatians chapter 2 because I find it to be very fitting uh, at this moment in my life and as well as with some of the videos that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Now, our first video for today is about monitoring spirits. And as members of the body of Christ, this is something that we have to be careful of because there will be people who come in and pose as your brothers and sisters with the sole purpose of spying out your liberty. And this is also why we're reading Galatians chapter 2 today, because Galatians chapter 2, 4 says, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. So check out our first video. Listen, be careful of monitoring spirits working through people. Now, how is this biblical? So we see the teachers of the law, right? Always following Paul around, trying to watch what Paul was doing, trying to study his every move so that they can bring that information back to the Sanhedrin, right? And bring accusations against him. 
Same thing happened with Jesus. The teachers of the law always asked Jesus questions, trying to see what his response was going to be. They were hoping to find something wrong so that they could bring it back to the authorities and bring accusations against him. This is the same thing people will do in your life. Monitoring spirits working through people. They will stalk you. They will stalk your social media page. They will try to see what you're doing and how you're doing it. They're going to try to study your every move. They'll even try to befriend you and act like they want to minister to you. But really, they don't want to minister to you. What they want to do is gather information upon you to try to figure out a way that they can derail you or hinder your destiny. Amen. Listen, be careful of monitoring spirits working through people and pray to God for discernment when dealing with certain people. Come on, let's get it. Amen. And you know what? You can really only tell by their language, uh, their doctrine, and eventually even the best faker will tell on themselves. So they cannot pretend for very long without the truth coming out. And when you are shown who someone is, you have to believe them. And the Bible wouldn't tell us to mark and avoid people if we weren't going to have to sometimes. I'm sure if you are a member of the body of Christ and you have posted any videos talking about our Lord Jesus Christ on social media, at least one time you have had someone come in and say, his name is Yahuwah or Yahshua Hamashiach or one of those translations. And, you know, I assure you that our Lord Jesus Christ understands his name in any language. God is the creator of language, and he has always preserved his word in the most spoken language of the time. And this gentleman is going to be explaining why Jesus Christ is just fine to say if you are an English speaking person. Fam, truth teller is not telling y'all the truth. My goal in the video was to demonstrate whether it is Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus, or Jesus. All of them are actually the same name. So he comes on to the video and says his name is not Jesus. It is Yahuwah, the Savior. He is very clear on who he is. Then he gives scripture references. And I tried to explain to him that those are not included in any Hebrew lexicon. So let's continue on. So y'all know me. I'm going to ask for scripture references. So I asked him for book, chapter, and verse. He gives me Jeremiah 3 and 23, Hosea 13 and 4. So again, remember, he is contending that the Hebrew name for uh, Jesus is Yahuwah or Yahusha Hamasiach, all right, for the Messiah. All right, let's check it out. Also, look, do you see in that second comment um, from Truth Teller where it says, so who is the Savior? Joshua. The only time you're going to see the name Joshua in those verses is if you're reading a diluted Bible. So you can see here is Jeremiah 3 and 23, and you can see that he's referencing the B clause, which says that truly in the Lord, our God is the salvation of Israel. So as you can see on the screen, in the Lord is the Hebrew number 3068. Let's look at the other reference in Hosea. And here is Hosea 13 and 4, and you can see it says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God, for there is no Savior beside me. And again, the same number, 3068, is for the word, I am the Lord. So let's look up the, uh, the Hebrew lexicon and see what I am the Lord or the Lord actually means. And as you can see, just like we said in the original video, the word for the Lord there is Yehovah or called Jehovah, which means the existing one or the self-existent one. And as I said to him, there is no Yahuwah here, no Yahusha or any of that here. You can see exactly what it says right here in the Hebrew lexicon. So what will happen is you'll see a lot of Hebrew Israelites and other black religious identity cults that insist on calling uh, God or Jesus by their Hebrew names as if there is more power or authority inherent in that name. And the truth of the matter is, is that there's not. As I said in the other video, it was his actual apostles and disciples that were closest to him and walked in ministry with him for three years that transliterated his name into Greek when they wrote the New Testament. So there is nothing. Now, if you want to go and call him 
Yeshua, Yehovah, or any of those other names, by all means, there's nothing preventing you from doing that. But right. to insist to other people that we must call him by the Hebrew name uh, for any reason is not biblical and was not practiced by any of his disciples. So again, G uh, God's name, Jesus' name is not Yehua, not Yehusha, or any of those things. It is exactly what you saw there in the Hebrew lexicon. If you have any other questions, by all means, send them to me. Let me know. God bless. Love y'all. You know what? And I like how he said that. If that's what you want to call him, that's fine. But if you are going to be telling other brothers and sisters that they can't call Jesus, Jesus, you have now become a stumbling block to them in their faith. And I don't think anybody who loves our Lord Jesus would want to be that for anyone else. <laughs> Such a good movie. <laughs> All right, man. You guys take it easy. What is it? Are you just having some fun drinking out of the wells of Babylon? <laughs> Watching a little movie that the CIA paid him a little tip to put in some propaganda, you know, so that you can find out ahead of time what the government's going to do so that when the government actually does it, since you've already seen a movie, all of your emotions that should show up when you find out they're doing really, really sick shit actually don't show up because you're like, I've already seen this movie. Of course they're doing that. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like they did with the Avengers when they told you about Operation Paperclip, right? When they brought all the Nazis over here to help us with our rocket program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Enjoying the embers of a dying empire, huh? Yeah, I was just trying to have some fun. <laughs> well, you don't get to have fun. Okay, I know, I know. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Sometimes it does feel like we're a little bit of like a a fun killer, but you know, the truth is the truth, and sometimes. People really don't want to hear it, <laughs> but guess what? We stand on truth here. <laughs> Our next video is a clip from a longer video from the Industry Hoax Revealed YouTube channel. Now, I clipped it down to about 12 minutes, but it's a really informative video, and it basically uh, speaks on the idea that the story of Abe Lincoln's assassination is just that, a story, and it touches on a couple other stories we've been told. First, I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. Well, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed, and with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. Wow. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. You should view this video as a m investigation. I will discuss only the issues that have the greatest bearing on the immediate question, leaving you with issues to ask your favorite historian. To unravel more recent events, you have to unravel some of the events of the past. They're all the same. Yes. Same playbook. I have learned to trust my instincts. Once you understand the methods, you could look at events such as the Lincoln assassination with a new and educated eye. If you haven't watched the videos on Tupac, Mass Shits, MLK, Malcolm X, and other manufactured events, you may not follow my reasoning here. If you have Now, if you go back to his channel, you will see he covers all of the topics he just named, and he goes back to the footage, uh, who has the rights to the footage, and you can find out some very interesting things if you follow things like the money and ownership of certain things.
trouble with my conclusions here, I recommend you study closer to the history of controlled and manufactured events. Especially the history of intelligence operations. The first red flag that really put me on the right trail was the fact that John Wilkes Booth was an actor. As you probably know, much of the controversy of the Lincoln assassination has centered on Booth from the beginning. Those who have offered alternative theories have almost always started with Booth. We will see that they were not wrong to do so, but we will also see that they never went far enough. Even the most creative and outlandish theories didn't go far enough. The fact that Booth was an actor is the primary clue here. It was admitted but passed over as unimportant. We have seen that all these events featured actors, hence the O.J. Simpson hoax. The O.J. Simpson murder case was the first true reality show. A real-life soap opera with a cast of characters who became household names. With a cast of characters. A cast of characters played their part. In manufactured events, you want actors involved because actors are trained to manufacture events. That is the job of an actor. As in any other job, you hire professionals. The second red flag I found is that the assassination took place in the theater. No one ever looks closely at that. It's a red flag because this is all theater. As with Booth being an actor, like the rest of you, I've never focused on it. History and conspiracy tend to be very complex, while m is usually surprisingly simple. Without exception, these other investigators allow themselves to be buried under an excess of information. They soon get lost in media stories. Since the stories were created just for that purpose, we should not be surprised to find them sinking in it, but I will show you a way to pass through without even getting your shoes dirty. Another red flag was this kind of statement, it reads, very few academic historians have studied Lincoln's assassination in any depth. Why not? I think you will agree that is astonishing. It is the indication of a successful cover-up, and a cover-up is of course indication that what we have been told is not true. Why would historians avoid studying or writing about the Isn't that what historians are supposed to do? Apparently not. It is amazing the amount of current propaganda in support of this very old event. There is a lot of new misdirection on the assassination on the internet, and not just on history or encyclopedia sites. If you type in just about any question regarding the event, you get pages and pages of new lies, as if this event just happened. This leads an investigator to ask several questions. Why are living people spending so much time and effort retelling the old story? Why is it so important to keep the propaganda fresh and up to date on the Lincoln assassination? As I have said, the more someone tries to convince you of door number one, the more seriously you should look at door number two. When that person is telling you things that don't make sense, double down. If that person has any connection to the government, immediately invest heavily in door number two. Another red flag was the description of the assassination by Walt Whitman. Not many people know that Whitman gave a series of lectures in 1879 through 81 called the The Hidden Hand. Now we know where he's from and who he who he's associated with. As if we had a question about it. Mr. Lincoln! Mr. Lincoln! Very strange, as I think you will admit. But why would the be muffled? This was a theater. It should have echoed. Theaters are not built to muffle sound, are they? Everyone in the audience would have heard a shot from the president's box. Booth should have had 10 men upon him in an instant. Right. No one bum rushed the stage or... We are told in other him. variations of the story that Booth fired during loud laughter from the audience after a joke on stage. But in 1879, Whitman doesn't have it that way, despite being a writer, living through the event, making notes, and revising them often. As with current manufactured events, they can't get their stories straight, that part of the story should have been very easy to confirm, since they are supposed to have had a theater full of witnesses. 
If it was the standard story in 1879, why didn't the paid propaganda writer Whitman have it in his revised notes? Why would Booth jump down to the stage? Surely, to avoid capture. It would have been far easier and wiser to retreat behind the curtain of the box and flee down the back corridor. On stage, with a twisted ankle or broken leg, Booth should have been the sitting duck, both for men from the audience and for men on stage or backstage. But, unworried by that fact, Booth pauses to address the audience and hold up a knife. It sounds like theater. He just the president with a not a knife. Where did the knife come from? Are we expected to believe he just jumped 15 feet down with a large knife in his hand or pocket? You would say the knife was in a sheath. No, the story is Booth fought with Major Henry Rathbone, who was also in the box with the Lincolns, wounding him with the knife. Two problems there. One, try jumping down 15 feet with a large knife in your hand. You would drop it. Yeah, or hurt yourself at Struggling least Struggling with Rathbone should have taken some time. With the sh the woman screaming, and the fight with Rathbone, everyone in the theater should have been alerted to the president's box. There would have been at least a dozen men at the base of the box, just waiting for Booth. He would have leaped right into their arms, not onto a deserted stage. He is said by a famous witness to have passed a note to an usher, to be led into the box. So, speaking to the usher, Booth was carrying a large stick, a and a large knife. So I guess, in order to get into the presidential box with at least three weapons, all you need to do, is pass a note to an usher. Ask real nicely, pretty please. So I guess the president travels with no security, during the Civil War. Yeah, right. The story gets stupider. The stops to make a speech. Sheep and pass tyranny. Yeah, right. He stops to speak Latin, quoting Brutus from Julius Caesar. And where did Lincoln's guards go? To the lobby for cotton candy. Do you really think the president traveled in public during the Civil War without guards? Think about it. This reads like a bad script, not like real history. Things happen like this only when they are staged. We find more confirmation of all this when we look at what happened to Ford's theater right after the assassination. From Wikipedia. Following the assassination, the United States government appropriated the theater, with Congress paying Ford $100,000 in compensation, and an order was issued forever prohibiting its use as a place of public amusement. Between 1866 and 1887, the theater was taken over by the U.S. military and served as a facility for the War Department. That should look familiar, given what we know of more recent manufactured events. Remember how they closed, tore down, or confiscated all the crime scenes after 9-11. Remember how they tore down Sandy Hook Elementary after the alleged Wow. Remember how they stripped and rebuilt the BMW Tupac was allegedly in. This is how it is done, and it is and always has been a sign of a staged event. The best way to deter any private or real investigation is to close or destroy the crime scene. In the Lincoln story, they did both. First, they closed it, then bought it, then renovated it many times. This all but prevented any later analysis. Right. Which brings us to the next question no one ever asks. Why wasn't Booth fighting in the war? You will say the war was mostly over by 1865, but I mean from 1860 to 1864. Why wasn't Booth fighting for the South if he was so pro-Confederate? An even better question is this. If he was in his 20s and living in the North and able-bodied, why wasn't he drafted for the North? Do you think actors were given exemptions? Actors get draft exemptions because actors also have hidden agendas. My hero was a spy. Asia Booth Clark, John Wilkes' sister. 
He had been a spy. So that is all of the video that I put up, but it really illustrates how these manufactured uh, events play out. And when they use the same playbook over and over again, you can see a pattern. And I, I really encourage you to check out some of the other content on his channel because he goes really deep. Trying catnip tea. A few moments later. Where's Rick? Uh, I'm. Don't I'm just... care. My father touching me. I couldn't tell her. Drugs. No, we're, we're okay. Drugs. This is awkward. No, thank you. Drugs. Who, in, who invited? Self control, please. Not only is geoengineering not a conspiracy theory, it is nothing new. Now, this gentleman has a list of geoengineering patents, and he only goes through a couple, so I'm going to actually read a few before I push play. Uh, the first one is July 16th, 1891, a method of producing rain. August 6, 1913, a rainmaker. September 4th, 1915, protecting from poisonous warfare. We've got June 7th, 1927, electric heater. Um, I'm going to push. Did y'all know the first geoengineering patent was July 16th, 1891? Method of producing rainfall. Let's see here. Bloop. Designed to produce a condensation in the upper regions of the atmosphere. Let's check out some more real quick. Look, this is all the, these are all in order, but the 20. So we've got September 6, 1949, an aerial discharge device. Gee, what do they use that for? <laughs> wow. Smoke generator. A steam generator in 1954. Is the 40s, the 50s. Check it out. Let's go to the 70s. 74. 74, rocket having barium release system. 74, a chaff dispensing system. 74, a weather modification process. If you go up, continuing, I'm going upwards, uh, a cloud seeding system, an air pollution control method, solar temperature inversion device in 1972. Chaff dispensing system, or chafe, shall we say. A chemical system for releasing a good yield of free barium atoms and barium ions to create ion clouds in upper atmosphere. I mean, this has got everything, dude. Let's move on. Let's go to the early 2000s, shall we? Synthetic Synthetically spun silk nanofibers. We've got in 2000, a solar-powered airplane. 2000, a method and apparatus for modifying clouds. Synthetically spun silk nanofibers in a process for making the Solvent detergent. Same in 2000. 
I love how I can just click on this every time. A silk nanofiber composite network produced by forming a solution of silk fiber and yada yada. Man, there are so many of these, man. This has got so much more information than just that. Seriously. What this is, is a $20 ebook, man. I'm telling you, it's the best money. Well, we're not buying your ebook, but that definitely shows how long weather modification and geoengineering has been something that the government is working on and doing on a regular basis. Our first video touched on monitoring spirits, but this video goes way deeper. There is something we call familiar spirits, and there is something we call monitoring spirits. Most people are familiar with monitoring spirits, but very few people are familiar with familiar spirits. And what I want you to understand today is that familiar spirits are far more dangerous than monitoring spirits. And that is because monitoring spirits can only move based on what they know about you. Meaning, as long as you keep your mouth shut, you won't have to watch your back. They won't be able to afflict you. Because monitoring spirits are not like God. Unlike God, they are not omniscient, meaning they cannot read your mind. I'll quickly give an example here and we go deeper. Then I talk about familiar spirits because that's what I want to talk to you guys about and it's going to be very powerful. In the Bible, we see a man called Samson. His destiny is to deliver or rather his assignment is to deliver the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And the Philistines could not stop him as long as they did not know his secret. But they strategically positioned a monitoring spirit in his life. And in this case, we are talking about Delilah. Delilah kept on asking Samson, Samson, what is your secret? Where is your power? What gives you power? And as long as uh, he lied about the source of his strength, the Philistines could not overthrow him. It was until he shared and told Delilah that his strength was in his hair, that the Philistines were able to take him to a barber shop and remove his hair. And after that, a man with the destiny of a lion died like a hyena because of a wow. monitoring spirit. What would have happened? to Samson if he did not share his secret to and with Delilah. I believe Samson will have fulfilled his assignment. A lot of people can't progress in life, can't make progress in any way because of uh, the people around them. The people around them are portals to monitoring spirits. They are a harbor to monitoring spirits. That every time you share your goals, your dreams, and your plans, rather even your achievements with them, guess what? Before you know it, everything will collapse. And that is because uh, you are dealing uh, with a monitoring spirit. Hence, you need to be careful who you share your dreams, your goals, your progress, because not everybody wants to see you progress. So it's important you check who you share your dreams and your goals with. It goes beyond friends. It goes beyond ordinary people. It comes down to family members as well. They are people who are surrounded by portals to these spirits. Some of you, your own mother. Some of you, your own father. Some of you, your own sister. I'm talking about you knowing that this deal is a done deal. And before you know it, out of excitement, out of joy, you share it with your sister. You share it with your father. You share it with your mother. And before you know it, everything goes haywire. Now, how many of you have had this exact thing happen to you? I want to know. Please leave it in the comments. It's really important that we don't tell everybody everything that is going on in your mind or in your life because not everyone is for you. Some people are around you and they actually don't even like you. And you come back 
and wonder why and what happened. How come this deal was a done deal? What really happened is because that very moment when you shared that, a monitoring spirit was informed that this is what's going to happen. And you what they power. do is they specialize in causing havoc in the lives of men, in the lives of people. So every time you share something that is about to happen to you or something that you're about to do for yourself or in your life, whether it's a business, whether it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to build a house or you want to buy a car, it is very important. Actually, it's wisdom for you to keep quiet about it because not everybody around you wants to see you go up, wants to see you win, wants to see you succeed. So some people are strategically positioned by the enemy just as you have destiny helpers believe it or not the opposite is true you also have destiny destroyers and this is so important for a child of god to understand because satan only moves with what he knows a monitoring spirit only moves because of what it knows i'll give another example and we talk about familiar spirits in the book of Matthew chapter 3, and you read verses 12, Jesus is baptized by a man called John. The heavens opened. The Holy Spirit came in a form of a dove, and a voice spoke and said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. What did the voice say? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Before that, we have never seen Satan attack Jesus. Jesus, at the age of 12, confused scholars, answered questions in the synagogue. The time he was lost, he, he was able to shock even scholars at that time, but Satan was never bothered. It was until when heaven revealed to the people in Jordan and to John the Baptist who Jesus was. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. That when you read Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, And Satan came after Jesus and said to Jesus, If you are the son of God. You see now, he's using what he had. He did not say, If you are the savior of the world. If you are Christ. If you are the only begotten of the father that he loves. No, 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 no. He used what he had. And he said, if you are a son of God, turn this stone to become bread. So monitoring spirits, they only move wow. based on what they know. The information you share with others, the information you tell others, that's what they use to afflict you. So you need to be very careful here. Because we always say it, and I'm going to say it again. If you watch your mouth, you don't have to watch your back. We have one mouth and two ears for a reason. And it reminds me of the mystery. Satan is not omnipotent like God. And if he had known of the mystery of the fact that God was going to pour out grace and we were going to have the gift in him, the revelation of the mystery, he would never have crucified the Lord of glory. We really have to watch who we speak to about our dreams, our lives, you know, our relationships. We really have to be careful. Now we have time for one more video before we get into the word today. And this is Kent Hoven explaining how sound created the universe. What if everything here is a manifestation of the voice of God? What God if said, it is. let there be. You know, when he speaks, the universe is created. When he speaks, the dead come to life. When he speaks, the wind lays, the wind quits blowing, the waves lay down. I mean, everything obeys the voice of God. In English, we have verse and prose. Verse is a spoken sentence and prose is, you know, poetry that rhymes. So, universe is a single spoken sentence. That's interesting. God said, let there be light. There has been interesting research done in the last 50 years on exactly what is light, exactly what is matter. I don't think anybody knows for sure yet. We can say, well, it's made up of atoms. Okay, I understand, okay. And then the atoms are made up of electrons, neutrons, and protons, and maybe some other stuff in there. Okay, I understand. What are they made up of? Could it be that the whole thing is actually uh, light energy or sound energy? So God simply spoke the universe into existence. That's a powerful thought. Several times in Genesis 1 it says, and God said, let there be, let there be, let there be. 
So the word universe means a spoken sentence, and we actually live in a spoken sentence. Woo! This is it. You're living in the middle of it. Man, that is so beautiful. And then many other times it says, hath God said. Amen. Now we're going to be reading Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, does that mean that he did it for a half hour? No, that's essentially him saying, no, we did not deal with them at all, not even a moment. But of these who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. And that is actually something that I found once I came into learning how to read the word of God properly and what right division was, there were a lot of teachers that I had followed that I realized that they have no idea. They ended up adding nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentile. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Now, he told him he was honest and direct with him, which is what we're called to be to. For before that certain time, that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews or dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. And you'd see that he was acting one way in front of others that he did on around different people. He was not consistent, and so he needed to be rebuked. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the, mentor, the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And that's kind of the same as uh, trying to put someone back under the law when it's very clear in the word of God that we are under grace and that the law was fulfilled. Who We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, 
Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If you made it all the way to the end of today's episode, this time I want you to put the word grace in the comments. I love each and every one of you, and I will see you next time. Until then, stay prayed up and stay highly motivated.